Hi folks, this is Wendell Calder. This is my wife Joan and uh, we are full-time uh, servants of the Lord involved in a ministry which we call Local Church Evangelism. This church, First Baptist Church of Lady Lake, Florida, which happened to have been founded and is pastored by our son-in-law, has been a faithful supporter of our ministry from day one. And so what we're going to do on this uh, video is just basically share with you a little bit concerning the ministry to which God has called us and the ministry that He's given us uh, over the years. We started out in the pastorate in Down East, Maine, and for 16 years we served in a pastoral ministry. One of those in church for three years, and then the second church, the Lord used us in the founding and the establishing of that church, and we were there for 13 years. Also at that same time, while we were pastoring that church for 13 years, God opened a door for me to do some teaching in the public high school, and as a result, we had the joy and privilege of leading some young people to Christ, and some of them today are faithfully serving the Lord, some even on the mission fields of the world. But then while we were pastoring uh, in Woodland, Maine, the Lord laid a burden upon my heart to start a camp ministry. Now there were camp ministries available in our area, but they mostly were for boys and girls and teenagers, and I thought it'd be great to have something for the entire family. And so one of my men knew of a property that was for sale, actually happened to be only about an hour's drive from where our church was. So one day on a beautiful day, he and I went up and took a look at it. And just to make a long story brief for you, uh, the Lord uh, laid it on our hearts that we ought to start a camping ministry, contacted the owner who lived at the time in the state of Maryland, and uh, we ended up forming a board. We purchased the property, and in 1970, we started what's called Living Waters Bible Camp and Bible Conference. And for 20 years, my wife and I were involved there in that ministry, and uh, for the first year of the camp, I said to her, if you would just head up the kitchen this year till I find somebody. Well, 20 years later, I hadn't found anybody. And uh, so God gave us a great time, and the ministry is still going on. Uh, we do not direct it, but I do go back each year and speak for them and share, and uh, God has greatly blessed the ministry uh, over the years. Then also, back in 1983, my wife and I made our first mission trip to India. While being in India at that time for several weeks, the Lord gave us a burden for that country and a desire to train some Indian young people in the Word of God so that they could go back and share the gospel with their own people. So we began way back in 1983 what we called Project India. And as a result, we've brought young men and young women from the land of India to the United States, trained them in the Word of God, and they've gone back to serve the Lord in their own country. Then we tried to bring some other young people, and the consulate would not give them a visa to come, and so we raised the funds and uh, put them through Bible college in India. And today they're faithfully serving the Lord there, and we're very involved still in ministry. We have uh, seven families at the present time uh, that we're supporting through our Project India ministry, and God has used many of these in a wonderful way, not only in the land of India, but some of them, he's using them literally around the world. Then in 1975, we left the pastorate in the state of Maine and uh, felt God calling us into the ministry of local church evangelism. And at the time that I'm sharing with you on this video, we are just beginning our 40th year of traveling in local churches. And during this time, God has literally opened doors for us around the world in sharing the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. So I thought I'd give you that little brief background, and then I've got to ask my wife, Joan, to just share with you what it, what it really has been over the years that to her in the ministry has been encouraging, uh, it's been fulfilling, and probably, as we'll say, the most important and exciting aspects of the work in ministry, because any of you know the wife is as vital a part of any ministry as the preacher is himself. Matter of fact, sometimes I think they're a more vital part. And so, Joan, you just go ahead and share with them what the Lord lays on your heart. Well, the thing I think that is most important to me and most exciting is in the churches and on the mission field where we go to see the people that come to know the Lord. And then another aspect of that is to go back 
several years later and see that they're still on fire for the Lord. And then the Lord has, like Wendell said, opened up doors around the world and we've met some wonderful, wonderful people and we've made some wonderful friends. And the souls of men and the friends that we have met makes everything worth it all. You mean you're all done in that I'm short period of time? <laughs> right. well, let me tell you something, folks. She says a lot more than that at home. Okay. And great, Joan, if you were to share with the folks out there, uh, these are dear folks uh, of the church that uh, have faithfully supported us and so on. Uh, what would be a particular prayer request, something they could pray for with relation you know, to the ministry? Then I think that would be good just to share that with them. Well, of course, uh, we need good health to continue to do what we are doing. And then, like I said before, the most important thing is to see uh, precious souls come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And that would be my two prayer requests. Well, you couldn't have given two any better than that, I guess. Thank you, dear. You know, when we started this ministry, uh, I had a life verse that I had claimed for many years. Then, in addition... I took that life verse as the verse for the basis of our ministry. And that verse is found in John's Gospel, chapter 15 and verse 16. Jesus is speaking, and he said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I've ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever... You shall ask of the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. And this verse has been such an encouragement and a challenge to me over the years. So I'd like to just leave a couple of three thoughts with you with relation to this verse. First, we have the choice. God says, I've chosen you. Now, the choice here is not in salvation. He's not talking about salvation in this chapter. He's talking about service, about discipleship, about commitment fruit bearing. God has chosen every believer to represent him to the lives of others. What a privilege to be chosen of Almighty God to share this glorious message. But then secondly, God says, I never choose you, but I give you the credentials to be able to handle it. He, look what he says. You've not chosen me, I've chosen you, and I've ordained you. In other words, God says, I've put my touch upon you. I've given you the credentials you need to get the job done. Then thirdly, we have the commission. I've chosen you, I've ordained you. Here it is now, here's the commission. Go and bring forth fruit. It's not optional. It's not up for discussion. See, God's purpose in saving you and me was not just so we'd go to heaven. If so, what are we doing here? He saved us to serve. So what's our commission? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And I don't know exactly how many countries, but we've been well in over 30, 35 countries of the world. And every time you share the gospel, it's exciting to see our God at work in lives. Now, not only the commission, I love the consequence of what it says, and that your fruit should remain. Not just to bear fruit, not just see people saved, but as my wife already mentioned, to see that fruit remain, grow, mature, and develop for the glory of God. Then the verse ends with a word of confidence. What is it? Whatever we ask in His name, He'll give it. Now, it doesn't, don't just say, whatever God, God says, whatever you ask, I'll give it to you. No, He doesn't. No, He says, you go, you bear fruit, fruit that lasts for my glory, what you ask, I'll give. You know why? We're going in obedience to His word. And we're going on the basis of the commission that he's given us. So let me say to all the folks, First Baptist Church of Lady Lake, as you watch this, and I know some of you are new and not familiar with our ministry. We make our home in Newport, Maine. Just a moment, I'm going to give you some contact information. If you'd like to get in touch with us, we'd love to correspond with you. But let me say to each and every one, thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your financial support. We do not take it lightly, and we realize we stand, first of all, accountable to God, but then secondly, to the people of God who've been so faithful in supporting local church evangelism. So this is Wendell and Joan Connor saying thank you for giving to the Lord. Now, if you'd like to contact us, here's the information. 
just local church evangelism, post office box A, just the first letter of the alphabet, Newport, N-E-W-P-O-R-T, Maine, 04953. The phone number, 207-368-2232. Email, lcevangelism at aol.com. You contact us, either one of those. We'd love to hear from you. We'll correspond with you, and we appreciate your prayers and your faithful support. And I would say, God bless you, and also let me challenge you. Be a fruit-bearing Christian for the honor and the glory and the praise of Jesus Christ. Thank you.